guys, it's Jen, and I'm back with another stash kit video. I'll make sure to link to the video below where I put this stash kit together. This is what I'll be using for the month of September. And I wanted to start by showing you that I am using this sketch that I created right here. And um, this photo of my husband and my sister-in-law. My husband's playing the guitar and my sister-in-law is playing the piano. We're a very musical family. When we get together, we all sing and play and it's fun. So I'm going to do a layout all about that. And I've kind of got it sketched out here, you can see. And I've got this plan to make some strips of cardstock with pattern peeking out from behind some circles. And um, I've just made a few notes to myself on this. This is a page planner from the Happy Life Shop, which I'll link to below. This is by Tracy Claiborne. And I like using these for my sketches. Um, and it fits nice in my planner. So I'm going to go ahead and get started with that. And just this, another side note, I... In my kit, I had included this sticker sheet from the Maggie Holmes, um, what is it? Something with a C. Celebrate. I always say it wrong. Anyway, from, oh, confetti. From the Maggie Holmes confetti collection. And it has this little guitar. And so I'm going to make sure to include that. So when I'm looking through my papers that I've included in the kit, I'm just keeping the colors of this in mind. Although I want to lean more heavily toward maybe the teals, um, rather than the pinks, even though, um, I have my husband and my sister-in-law, but I don't want to make it too feminine, but it doesn't really matter. My husband said I had permission to use pink and flowers on pages about him. So we'll just see how it goes. So I'm going to go ahead and put you on fast forward and get started on the layout. So I'm just starting by looking through the patterns that I have. I know I'm going to use a white background because on my, on my, oh, what I was just showing you was that on my sketch, I had originally planned to place the photo on the right hand side, but because of the orientation of my photo, my sister-in-law is looking into the page when I place it on the, on the left instead of the right. So I like that better. What I'm doing now is taking my one inch circle punch from EK Success and punching a bunch of circles. Um, they're not evenly spaced apart, but they are like an even height because I pushed the punch up to the edge of the paper so that they would all be the same height. And I'm going to create three strips of these circles. And that is what I'm going to place some of these pattern papers behind so that I can get some of the color peeking out from behind them. I accidentally punched two of them too close together on this strip, but I'll just hide it with the photo. And I'm just going to layer them up underneath the photo to see kind of how I want them to lay and to see where I want to cut off a circle or two here and there so that I have some varying lengths. And so I'm just switching a few of them up here. And now I am going to grab a one and a half inch or it's one and a quarter inch circle punch that I'm going to punch some of the patterns out of to lay underneath those other circles and before I do that I'm going to use my EK Success powder tool to take the sticky off the back of that guitar. I love using that because I'm indecisive. Same reason I use wax paper for my titles and I'm using some of the six by six paper pads. It's my mind's eye. Um, to cut out some of the circles. I thought it would be easier to cut into a six by six paper pad than a full sheet of paper because this is my first layout with the kit. Um, I was hoping to not have to cut into the large patterns, but I did anyway because they were pretty and I wanted them behind some of these circles. So I um, punched some out of that, that yellow floral paper, which is absolutely beautiful, and some out of this dictionary paper which I thought I might use for a background, so that was a little bit hard to do. It's breaking my heart to, to punch these out, but it was worth it in the end. So um, I'm also punching out of that diagonal stripe. Um, you can see all of these patterns in the original video, which I'll link to below. This one was the hardest because I, I knew I probably wanted to use that for a background that fades from the pink to the wood grain, but it had music notes on it, and this layout is all about music, and so I had to do it. So I sacrificed, and I'm glad I did. It looks good. So um, I'm just seeing what else I might want to lay inside of the circles. I pulled out some flare. I won't end up using the flare, but just trying it out here. 
And now I'm going to place my photo over those strips to see where I need to actually add the patterns. And I'm looking for a pencil here and I think my daughter must have run off with it, used it for her homework or something. So I pull out a an erasable Muji pen, which is the same company that makes the pen I always use for my journaling. I'll make sure to link to the erasable one. I use it in my planner and I really love it. I'm using my Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive to adhere the circles and it's in a fine line bottle. I like it because it has a really thin applicator and um, so I can just apply just a really thin line of that adhesive behind each circle and I'm sorry because I have out of control hair and my head makes a few appearances. <laughs> um, I am not going to fill in every circle. I'm going to leave some of them open just because I like the way that it looks. and. Here again, I'm just trying to see exactly where the hole will fall to see where I can add those circles. And I'm making sure to position the circle within the, the pattern within the circle so that it, it has an interesting look to it. And the diagonal stripes look nice, all of that. I'm, I always take care to um, see where I place the pattern within the circle. Or within anything when I whenever I back a die cut or anything like that I always make sure it looks good like that so I'm just making sure that I have an even distribution of color so I don't want too much pink or blue or anything on one side so I'm just making sure that as I back these patterns that I am aware of that and like I said I'm not gonna back every circle I think I leave one open on the end at the top and one open on the end at the bottom and then one more open or two more open just kind of in the middle. And I'll fill a few of those with some other things later. I really love the way that the white on white looks with these strips because it really helps those patterns to pop but you could definitely do this with craft or you know any color that you wanted or you could put the white strips onto a patterned background that would be fun too. So now I'm trying to decide how I'm going to do my title. I know that I wanted to use some of my brush script. If you've watched my videos lately you know that I am obsessed with brush script. I, I did a video on it um, I think a couple videos ago from this one. And I just, I love using watercolors and a paintbrush to um, do some hand lettering. So I've been having some fun with that. And you can see more of that on my Instagram account, which is at Crafty Jen's Gal. And so I'm going to use it for a title. I haven't um, done this with watercolors before. I did a layout for the Crafty Maven Getaway channel where I used my brush script with some... Um, what is it called? Masking fluid, which is kind of like a sticky fluid that you paint on and when it dries, you can paint over it and it resists whatever you put on top of it. So I did that for the Crafty Maven Getaway channel, um, which was fun. But here I'm using just the regular watercolor. So I'm using this peachy color, which kind of matches the pink in that music note paper that is in the, the circles below. And then I'm going to splatter a little bit of some like reddish orange pink that's in the floral on that yellow pattern. And so I'll splash a little bit of that. And it wasn't splashing how I wanted it to, so I just used my paintbrush to make it do what I wanted. And I really like the way the title turned out. I think I'll definitely be doing this again. So now I'm trying to decide where I'm going to put the guitar and how I'm going to embellish the, the layout. Before I get too far into it, I think I do lay down those strips because I realize that it's not going to do me any good just pushing them around a lot. Um, I did pull out this washi tape and I'm going to lay a strip of it at the top, but I don't want it to be exactly straight. So I'm um, using a technique that I stole from Missy Whitten, which I will try to remember to link to her channel below as well. She has really artsy, fun layouts and she uses washi tape, which I have a huge stash of washi tape that has been sitting around forever. I haven't used it in a while. She's inspiring me to use it some more. Um, but I'm ripping the washi tape in half so that I get kind of a jagged ripped edge on one end and I really like the way that looks. And I'm going to use the leftover pieces for a little accent on the bottom. And 
here I'm deciding to mount my photo on some white cardstock, surprise, surprise. And then I'm also going to give it a mat of that vellum with the gold foil circles on it, which is from um, my mind's eye. And I really like that. There's just a, you can't really see it right now, but there's just a tiny bit of gold glitter on that guitar sticker. And so I know I'm going to bring gold even more around the layout, even more than um, what I've got so far. I'll bring a little bit more in. So at first I thought I was going to leave some larger uh, edges on, on two of the sides of this photo mount, but I decided not to, so I ripped them off. So I ripped two edges and then two edges are clean because I, I butted it up against the edge. And here's where I'm deciding to go ahead and glue these pieces down before I get too far into the layout. And I'm putting some thin foam adhesive behind the circles that are going to be popped up just so it gives a little bit of shadowing and you can really see the circle pop that way. Even though it doesn't have pattern behind it, you can um, get a good like it gives a nice shadow. I just really like the way it looks. So I'm doing that again here on this one where I'll have the center, that center circle popped up and then the rest of it will be laying flat or lying flat. I, I'm the worst at laying and lying. Um, so I, I decided to place them at a bit of an angle. The bottom one is straight, but I, I wanted the center one to be at a bit of an angle just so it looks a little different. And here I'm placing the top one and I'm again putting some of the thin foam adhesive and just some regular dot adhesive behind the rest of it. So I'll just place that down and I forgot to take some of the foam or the backing off that foam adhesive on the bottom. So now I'm going to place another piece of that gold washi tape underneath that, that first piece. And you can't see it here very well, but in the close up photos you will. Um, the there's a piece of it that's laying on top of that white strip and then a piece that's laying on the background and there's a bit of a difference in height so there's some nice shadowing going on there so be sure to look for that in the close-up photos and I did run a little bit of my scotch or my EK success powder tool underneath of that top piece so that it didn't stick to the bottom piece because I really liked that shadowing effect that was going on so here I'm taking some of the project life rub-ons that I included in my kit and I'm going to use some of the gold stars to just kind of dot them around the title. And I'm using five. I like to do things in odd numbers of three or five or, or things like that. It's just more visually um, pleasing. And often when I do that, I'll do two close to each other and then the rest far apart, whether it's one or three. And so I've got two closer up to the word we and then the other three are spread out throughout the the title and I really like the way those add just a little subtle bling. They're gold foil um, so it brings the gold into the title area but they also kind of fit in with those paint splatters. Now I'm adding a little piece of the branding a branding strip from one of the papers just to the top there with that gold washi tape and trimming off the excess and I thought I might add a little piece of that vellum up there but it didn't end up working. So now I'm going through some of the other embellishments to see what I might want to add. And I know I want that guitar to sit there on the title because I like the way that where the guitar kind of bows out at the bottom, it, it fits into where the Wii goes in on the title, if that makes sense. I'm going to pull some of the other stickers from the sticker sheet, some little banners to place to the left of the photo just to kind of fill in that space. I'm going to struggle with the space underneath the guitar because it does feel empty and like something needs to go there, but I know I want it to sit where it's sitting. So I'm playing around with some of the stickers from the sticker sheet to see what might work. I found this sticker that says special event on it, which I thought was kind of fun. It kind of looks like a concert. I mean, special event makes it seem like a concert ticket or something. And I really liked the idea of including it. And so I'm going to place it into the cluster to the left top left of the photo there and I've got it nestled in so that it's the the little banner pieces are overlapping it but you can still see the words special event and I really like that I am gonna go back and forth on the banner that I have resting there on the top and eventually I'll decide against it but now I'm trying to find something to fill in the gap that's between the guitar and and those other stickers and I'm not going to find it for a while, so 
I'm going to wrestle with that guitar a little bit. Eventually, I get it to where I like it, but it's still not perfect, and that's okay. So I pulled out some of these hearts that are from um, a crepe paper vellum pack, which I included bits from two crepe paper vellum packs, which I added after I made the the video where I showed you where I included everything. Um, and these ones are from the Oh Darling collection, I believe. I pulled out some of these Studio Calico wood pieces, but I don't end up using them. Again, just trying to find something to fill in that space. So uh, I'm going to ignore it for a little bit and I'll come back to it. I decided to move on to my journaling, which I typed up on my typewriter. And I like the juxtaposition of the typed font with my brush script font from the title. So I'll often do that if I use um, a title that I use thickers or something like that on, then I like to use my handwriting because it gives a bit of a different feel and I, I like to have that that difference in font. So I'm just cutting those into really thin strips and I'm going to layer them to the right of the title and above where I have those circles. And I had planned on doing some watercoloring or something behind the journaling strips. And so here I'm trying to decide what I can bring in. And I, I found this um, stencil from Simon Says Stamp. It's just a diagonal stripe. I really like this stencil. And I will end up using it, but I'm going to go back and forth on a few things before I actually put it on the page. I thought I might use some Distress Ink through it to just give a little bit of color, but it was too dark. It seemed too dark to me. So what I'm going to do instead is, I'm, I can't remember if I what I did right away. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit of Scattered Straw Distress Ink, which is a yellow color, onto some packaging, and I am just put some water on it, and I'm going to just smush it onto the background. I just want something really light and soft to be behind the the journaling and just to add a little bit of something to the page. So I decided that would be something nice to add in that space below the guitar to just maybe fill it up a little bit. And then I put some on the very, very bottom as well, just so I have three areas where that lies. And it ends up drying a lot lighter than what it, what it looks like right now. And I like the way it looks in the end. Although at this point I was like, couldn't I leave well enough alone? Why did I have to go and add something else? Because it was looking soft and pretty, which is what I go for always but I always end up adding too much, but I'm happy with the end result, so <laughs> it ended up okay. So I'm just trimming off the ends of those typed pieces. Like I said, I used my typewriter, but you could just use your computer if you, if you don't have a typewriter. And I'm going to get those glued down here in a second. I'm still debating on that, on that uh, banner piece. I feel like it needs something at the top, but I'll go back and forth. So I'm using my favorite Tattered Rose Distress Ink and I'm going to mix it with just a tiny bit of modeling paste and it just gives a nice, modeling paste gives a nice uh, texture and I'm just going to do some of these diagonal stripes over the yellow that I um, smushed on the background and that's how I'm going to fill the space um, behind the, or beneath the guitar. And it doesn't fill it exactly, but it's enough. And I like the way it ends up looking. It just gives a little bit more texture. And I love that light pink color. It's perfect. And it matches really well with the title and some of the pink in the papers as well. I put a little bit over to the right hand side also. I didn't want it to look perfect, but so, and it def definitely doesn't. <laughs> I didn't want to have any edges that were too hard. I'm making sure to clean that up with a baby wipe right away because once that modeling paste dries, it's super hard and it, it's pretty difficult to get off. Sorry, you can see a little bit of my light shining through my window. Um, I'll cha It'll change here in just a second. So I'm going to glue down those strips of journaling. And I just talked about how music is a huge part of um, being a scow and how his dad, my husband's dad always plays the guitar and everyone ends up singing and my husband plays the guitar and piano. I play the piano. My sister-in-law plays the piano. Like we just, we're musical and we, and we like to sing and whenever we're together, someone ends up getting out the guitar. So I'm just talking about that. Um, I think it's important to document those kinds of things that 
it you might take for granted because it just seems like a normal everyday occurrence or whatever, but to document the fact that you you do these things often. So I have some dies that I got from Simon Says Stamp that are really cute and they have kind of a brush script font and I had just cut some to test them because they're new. Um, one says enjoy, one says summer, and one says hello or something. Um, and I thought that it might be fun to use them. You can kind of see it sitting off there to the right, the one that says summer. But um, I don't end up using it. But I will on a future layout. They're really cute. Now I'm pretty much to some finishing touches and I'm trying to see if any of these little puffy stickers will work. Um, I did use a couple of them, a couple of the plus signs. I scattered them throughout the journaling and I added one into one of the empty circles along with a sticker that says love, love, love. Um, and you can see that better in the close-ups also. And I really like the way that looks. So now I'm deciding, yes, I do definitely need something at the top right just to balance all of the stuff that's going on in the bottom. And I am going to use that little label and I'll stamp the date on it here in a minute. Um, before I commit to that, I am just adding some of the larger stars on that rub-on sheet to the empty circles in the bottom. And I like the way that looks. And I'll add a couple more stars up to the top as well. And I think, yes, I'm going to get my Chamel roller date stamp and just stamp the month and the year. I say this every time, but I like the Chamel roller date stamp, even though um, the month, day, and year are different from the way that we do it in America. The month and the year are right next to each other, and that's really nice because I often only stamp the month and the year. And then I stamped the word so much fun with a Maggie Holmes roller date or roller phrase stamp underneath uh, the title. And now I'm deciding... I have these stamps that I included in the kit. They're from an older Scraptastic kit, and I really just love this stamp set. It's really cute. I don't think it's available anymore, but I encourage you to pull out a stamp set if you make your own kit and try to, to stamp on your layouts. I stamp on a lot of my layouts already, but it's nice to pull out a stamp that I had forgotten about or that I don't use very often to that I really do love and try to get it used. So I'm just testing out some different ink colors to decide what I want to do. It has, it's like a brush, it, uh, there's like a brush background to the stamp and then, it, and then um, some type typewriter font on top of it. So it's kind of the opposite of my typed journaling. And so I like the idea of including it above it. So I eventually went with some smoothie ink from close to my heart so I could get a pop of that, that bright pink right there. And then I'm going to tuck that date up at the top underneath the washi tape and I'm going to rub on some of the stars and you can see that I didn't wait for the ink to dry on that that slick surface and I got ink everywhere on my layout so I just took a little piece of fine sandpaper and sanded it off since I have a white sheet of cardstock you can barely tell now so I like that I decided to add that little heart sticker at the bottom um, in that circle because I needed another pop of that bright pink and here I'm just adding a few more splatters of that pinkish color to the bottom with some watercolor. And that's going to complete the layout. I hope that you enjoyed it and that you will um, tune in to my other stash kit videos. I'll have a new one every Thursday. And I will be sure to link to the original kit below. Thanks so much for watching. You can find out more on my blog at craftygenscout.com. We'll see you soon.